So this next slide, I'll do a whole talk on the acid and alkaline um, elements of food. And when you look at muscle or animal fat food, it's the most acidic. What I found interesting is that the Western diet is acidic food through and through. It's roots, it's seeds, it's muscle. So it's roots, it's potato, it's seed, it's wheat, and it's muscle, it's meat. Potato, wheat, or corn, and meat. It's the three staples, it's all acid forming. So that diet creates mass acidity in the body, which leads to osteoporosis and bone decay and teeth rotting and all that kind of stuff. If I put this in one long line, at the very top you would have bones, then you would have leaves, stems, fruits, flowers, root seeds, then you have organs, and then at the very bottom you would have muscle. Okay, because it's that much more acid forming than roots and seeds are. A few more, well, I'll get onto further dangers, but let me just get through the, the bad stuff. So, one of the other things I really dislike about what's going on in the banting world is that they really make no mention of the state of farming. People still think that their meat comes from happy farms out in the Karoo. And look, some of it does, and I'll give you percentages, but it's very small. Most of it today, because there's such a huge demand for animal products, most of it is coming from factory feedlots. That's the US and South Africa included. Now, how many of you have watched a movie of what goes on in those feedlots? Anyone? Okay, a few of you have, so you know how horrendous it is. So, uh, excuse me if I haven't to mention a few things on it, because you know already. If you don't know what goes on, you can go and have a look. Each year, 60 billion land animals and 90 billion marine animals are slaughtered for human consumption around the world. Now, let me just step back a point. The world, I said this earlier, who, the World Health Organization, has said that you could get all your protein from plant sources. So if there's a situation where you didn't have to kill animals for your nutritional needs, well, why would you? And I'll just leave that in your head while we carry on through these numbers. So the slaughter of human consumption around the world. In the time it took me to read this, over 10,000 marine animals, 7,000 chickens, 300 ducks, 200 pigs, and about 50 cows were killed. What's that? 10 seconds. Those were the animals. It is staggering the numbers we're talking about. I found this, which was just profound. I mean, Gandhi was a profound man. You can judge the morality of a nation by the way the society treats its animals. And again, most people are like, well, we don't know about it, so it's, it's nothing to do with us. You know, I just buy steak from Pick and Pay. You know? I'm not trusting Pick and Pay is making sure this doesn't happen. I'm like, you know what, in today's world, big corporations, they're just out to make a profit. And that's the truth. So anyone who's going to take responsibility, it rests in the consumer. It always has, it always does. If we want to stop this stuff, it's very simple. You just stop buying it. You know, it doesn't take marching around the streets with placards. It doesn't take, you know, arson or any crazy. It just takes not buying it. It's as simple as that. And it's amazing how few people get that. It's like, well, just don't buy the GMO seed. Then the big GMO company goes under. You know, the most evil corporation on the planet stops being able to destroy the planet. That would be a good idea. Like, I'd like a Tara to live on a planet that is at least habitable. I mean, I suppose the joke in all of it is that the planet will always be a human type, but we're the ones destroying our habitat and our bodies. Yeah, so it's, it's like... Come on, guys. So the industry standard is that baby chickens who are not egg layers are, you, um, are not used to buyers, i.e. male chickens. They are put on a conveyor belt and sent directly into a grinder. Yeah, now, you can see this happen online. There are movies that show this. So the little baby chick is all like, happy to be alive. <laughs> chickens live in such close quarters that farm operators remove the beaks of chickens, turkeys and ducks, to keep them from pecking one another to death, often by burning or cutting the beaks off. Mm. Without anesthetic. No, 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 no. Anesthetic is never used in any procedure because it's too expensive. 65% of all hogs tested had pneumonia-like lesions in their lungs due to ammonia and other gases released from the massive amounts of manure that animals come into contact with every day. Pig farming is one of the most hectic. Veal calves are often forced to wear heavy chains to keep them from becoming overactive in their stalls. It's like a few days old. 
The reason they do that, is, and they kept in near total darkness and suffer, suffer from forced anemia for no other reason than to keep their flesh pale and attractive. You know, this is like the whole duck thing that was outraged in France many years ago. And this stuff happens today. It's not like, oh, it's last year, it was a hundred years ago, it was like a million years ago, it's like not today. Now, it's gotten worse. South Africa, because everyone's like, yeah, but that's America, come on, it's not America. Yeah. South Africa eats about 2.5 million chickens a day. There are 26 million chickens confined to battery cages in South Africa. Battery chickens in South Africa have an allotted space of 450 centimeters. It's the size of an A4 page. So the chicken lives its whole life in a box the size of an A4 page. The levels of hormones and antibiotics poured into cattle feed are unknown. But according to WWF South Africa, beef in South Africa is mostly produced in feedlots or factory farms. Grain fed is another way of saying feedlots. So this is how industry goes, oh, we'll put words on, it'll make people think it's good. You know, like free range, which is not a policed word. You could put free range in whatever you want, you can stick it on yourself. I mean, it's totally meaningless. So companies do it on, 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 all the time, all the time. You know, you go into a supermarket and you think, oh, it's free range better, really? Pigs in South Africa are largely the, world, the, the worst treated of all commercially farmed animals. Today, 60,000 pregnant sows so in South Africa are kept in stalls where they cannot move around or stand up straight. To ensure the best pork, when a sow gives birth, piglets are separated, so the only contact they have with their mother is the teat, through a little hole. Now, I've tried to keep this to, you know, as unscary as possible, because that's where I kind of end with animal cruelty. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, it's, you know, B, uh, R, B, H, G, G, H, have you guys heard of this stuff? Bovine growth hormone. So this is a hormone they pump into cows because it makes them produce more milk and makes them grow faster. It's been banned in over 100 countries in the world already because it's that dangerous to human health. Um, it leads to an increased rate of mastitis, which re leads to an increase of the use of antibiotics in the cows. Now mastitis, that's lesions and stuff on others. So they have to give more antibiotics, the antibiotics goes in the milk. Um, but the other thing that goes in the milk is all the blood and the pus. And people don't realize this, there's actually a legal limit of pus and milk. It's 100 million per litre, 100 million cells per litre. And South Africa is apparently a lot worse. I've had someone who's actually done the research here come and tell me, you do not want to know what it comes out of, because they use these big milk vats. And the bottom of that milk vat is a pure layer of pus. Yeah? And I once had a med student in one of my courses who said, you're insane, this does not happen. So I said, okay, do your own research. So what she did is, because she was at UCT, she had access to the path lab, she bought samples of milk in a local supermarket, tested them, found pus in all of them. She still emailed me and said, oh, I'm shocked. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty scary. So the amount of environmental impacts of these hormones entering our waterways is staggering. Like fish are becoming transgender, um, plants are being negatively affected. And it's just, it goes straight into the waterways. 600,000 dairy cows in South Africa, and around, that's around 2,000 dairy farmers, that's how many cows and farms there are. It's estimated about half of them are still using this stuff. Half of them. And it's been banned in 100 countries. Now the one thing people may not be aware of is that South Africa is very close to American policy. South Africa is the second largest producer of genetically modified crops in the world. We're heavily influenced by a big agribusiness. Heavily. Huge grants, big money gets pumped into government from American agribusiness. And South Africa is a dumping ground for this technology. That's why they keep using it. So, you know, we think we're safe here. So, BGH has been linked to an increased rate in colon, breast, and prostate cancer. You know, this is what I'm saying, you have to be very careful of the meat you consume. And I'll just put this one in red, the scale of the industrial animal cruelty is truly incomprehensible on our planet right now. You know, I had this crazy moment after doing this research yesterday, I spent about 10 hours working on the and I was driving up and looking at the cage, and it looks so peaceful and calm, and it's crazy like Matrix moments of like, they're fed on terror. Like, the population is fed on distilled terror. 
And there's no nice way of putting that. That is what happens. You think that you're going to absorb energy from the food you eat. That's the main thing you get from the food. And I haven't even got into that yet in the stuff in these slides. So people are wondering, why are they depressed? Why do they feel bad? Why are they uncomfortable? Why are they getting sick? So if you do want to get into this a little bit further, these are the movies I don't recommend and do recommend at the same time. Food Inc. Fresh. Food That Kills, Food Matters, Forks Over Nice, Farmer Get On, and Hungry for Change. They have varying levels of shocking video footage of what happens in these places. So, Earthlings, go nice. Earthlings. Earthlings is the worst of the lot, that's why I didn't put it on there. Um, it's, just, it's just gore from start to... I mean, it makes a horror movie look tame. Tame in the extreme. You know, it's, it's really that bad. I mean, I found this on YouTube. There's a movie there. Because these guys have realized, like, they're trying to get this information out there that it, of what's happening to animals on our planet. But no one wants to sit through an hour and a half of gore. You know, it's not pleasant for anyone. So they've distilled this stuff into a 12-minute movie. It's called From Farm to Fridge. And there's the YouTube URL. You're welcome to take a photo of it, check it out. 12 minutes, so we have to do I can do a minute and a half. That's it. I was done. Couldn't handle any more than that. It was like, I actually started making it. I'm not going to If you can, I mean, uh, again, I don't recommend it, and I do, you know, but if someone needs a wake-up call of what actually goes on, you know, this could be it. Could be it, you know? I hate the fact that humans need a clap across the head to wake up. It really is ridiculous. But after watching some of the stuff I watched, after looking at the research, it's abominable. There's no excuse. You know, I, I, I don't know how humans will come from this. I mean, you know, if you believe in karma, it's rough. I mean, we're talking... And again, everyone thinks it's the father who's doing this, the angry business is doing this. I am at the moment. You buy that stuff, you condone it. You know? It's not, it's not, it's not a neutral playing field yet. You spend money on it, you go, I condone these practices. And there's no grey area either. It's like, you either buy it or you don't. End of story. So now you've got the whole notes thing going on, where everyone's like buying meat and buying meat and buying meat and eating it four, five, six times a day. And they have no consciousness about this at all. None whatsoever. So the rate of suffering is just skyrocketing. So, on it, because some people are like, okay, but that's the animals. I mean, what, is it actually bad for me to eat? So what's going on nutritionally? So the Max Planck Institute for Nutritional Research in Germany found that 50% of the bioavailability of protein is lost when we cook it. So when you cook your steak or your choppy on the fire, half of that protein is not absorbable anymore, it's destroyed. But it's not only that, the altered proteins from the cooking disrupt cellular function. So it actually damages the way your cells work. One of the scariest things is that it speeds up the aging process. So you know that thing you are what you eat? You see what the bright choppy looks like? That's what your skin's going to look like in the end. It takes a bit of time, but that's the inevitability, you know? Bacon, which the banding guys are going crazy, bacon. One of the most carcinogenic, which is cancer forming, foods available because of the nitrosamines that are formed during frying. Look at this up, nitrosamines. Probably the most dangerous chemical formed in cooking. Anyone who does any food degree anywhere, this is one of the things they learn right at the beginning. <coughs> highly, highly toxic. Another toxic chemical called AGEs, or advanced glycation end products, this is what happens when sugar burns onto protein. Because there is a little bit of sugar in meat, even though you think it's all protein. It's in the blood and in the tissues. And when you cook it at high temperatures, as in anything above 100, 120 Celsius, there's a bonding that forms. It's called glycation. So dietary AGEs, when you eat the stuff, promote the development of various cardiometabolic diseases. Now, cardiometabolic diseases is an umbrella term for all diseases of the West, diseases of affluence, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all of that stuff. It's under that umbrella. We'll have uh, Dr. Shin sing again soon, and then he'll tell you all about that, because they all have the same core, all of these diseases with different names. So it's formed by cooking and high heat. The largest contribution of dietary AGEs was meat, firstly, secondly, cheese. Those are the two highest, and they ranked way higher than anything else. 
And again, I, I only mentioned stuff that is actually like really scary and dangerous, so yeah, you can have a look at the stuff. It's, I'm not making it up, it's online. More. So 70% of all beef and chicken, I didn't even know this, I learned this two days ago, is treated with carbon monoxide gas. The stuff that people kill themselves with when they're in the car, I don't know, <laughs> carbon monoxide. So the reason they do that is because it um, keeps the meat looking red. Even though it should be grey. Because it takes a few days to go grey. So they treat it with the stuff so that it looks fresh. But actually, all it's doing is it's hiding the fact that there could be E. coli growing there. Because if you saw a piece of steak that was all grey and disgusting, you'd be like, this is clearly off. But by using these chemicals and gases, people are fooled. They think the stuff is fresh when it's absolutely not. Sodium nitrate, nitrite is another one that's added to meats and fish as a preservative and a colorant. So it inhibits oxygen transportation. Now the amazing thing about this is it does the same thing in your body. So when you eat the sodium nitrite, it inhibits oxygen transportation in your body. Some of you have been to my talks where I've said, what is the cause of cancer? Anyone? What is the cause of cancer? Lack of, Lack of oxygen in your cell. End of story. The cause of, and this was discovered in 1930 something by Dr. Otto Warburg. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for this. I kid you not. Cancer is caused by weak in cell respiration due to lack of oxygen at a cellular level. Your cells are suffocating. When a cell suffocates, it has to, well, let me put it this way. If someone covers your mouth, do you change shape after a while? <laughs> you go all funny. You change colour, your eyes start bulging out, you start flapping your arms wildly. The st stuff happens, right? Now your cell is no different from you, it also is designed to live. It has an inbuilt, you know, live, live, live system. So if you suffocate your cell, what happens to it? Same kind of story. It mutates. It mutates to survive in the environment that it's found itself in. High sugar high acid, high chemicals, high stress, it mutates. And that mutation normally takes on the form of massive amounts of sugar receptors. Because sugar is what's prevalent, there's lots of sugar here. So if we switch from oxygen absorption to sugar absorption, we can survive. So what is cancer? Cancer is simply a defense mechanism of your body to survive. People think it's a disease, it's not a disease. It's your body trying to survive, that's all. Wild, hey? People are like, this dude's insane. <laughs> We're going to have Dr. Janie back here on Tuesday. Some of you went to her cancer talk. She will be telling us all about this again right here next Tuesday. She does an hour and a half on cancer where she talks about the stuff, lays it right out there, gives you statistics. All available. Uh, in 2011, more than 80% of antibiotics produced in the world were fed to livestock. How radical is that? So I mean, it's bad enough that people get antibiotics routinely, but animals? Radical. And those antibiotics go into the milk, into the cheese, into the meat, and more concerning, into the waterways. I didn't actually put down the stats, but they had, they had a number which was, there's so many millions of people that live in the world, and there's so much sewerage, there's so many sewerage works for these people, there's so many billions of cattle in the world, and the amount of sewage works for the cattle is zero, nothing. It's, and it's all going in the ground, it's the waterways. I mean, in the UK at the moment, where the water is fil filtered, you know, you can drink water out of a tap there that's been through seven kidneys. They can't get the stuff out. They can't get the pharmaceutical drugs out. Yeah. I mean, again, we're lucky living in South Africa and Cape Town where we can still get clean water. See why I don't like this talk. So what about pesticides? Leading cause, leading source of pesticide residues in the US diet. So this is the same for South Africa because it's very similar numbers. 55% from meat. Second leading source of pesticides, dairy, 23%. Total pesticide residues from vegetables, 6%. Total from fruit, 4%. Total from grains, 1%. So you can see the culprit. Quite clearly. Now, before I even go further, 
Some of you don't know this. A pesticide is also known as a biocide. Biocide means life, death. Literally, bio is life, side is death. So it's life, death. Now, the reason it doesn't kill you is that you are bigger than a bug. Bug is small. Bug dies quick from poison. Human bigger can handle more before it dies from poison. But it kills indiscriminately. It doesn't go, oh, we're going into human now, so we're not going to kill you. <laughs> I'm amazed how few people get this. They're like spraying their veggies and like, oh, you could eat that. It's, you know, if it kills an insect, it's going to kill you. Amazing. Percentage of US mother's milk containing dangerous levels of DDT. 99%. What? This, this, by the way, let me tell you where this comes from. Uh, this comes from John Robbins' book, Die for New America. His family fortune came from the, the, the ice cream giants, the, what was it, Baskin Robbins or something. And he spent all of his inheritance in this research, just finding out what's going on in the food supply. So I highly recommend that book. Pesticide contamination in breast milk in, of vegetarian mothers. No, you missed the line. Oh, yeah, I missed the line, sorry. Pesticide contamination of meat eating mothers compared to vegetarian mothers was 35 times as high. So that's a pretty good reason to at least stop eating meat for your children. The main reason for sterility and sperm count reduction in the US males is chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides, including BCBs, dioxins, DDTs. One ounce of the oxen can kill one million people. And they still spread our food. It's wild. There's a movie on YouTube called The Vanishing of the Male. You should check that one out too. It's about all of the sterility. We ain't seen nothing yet. Sterility rates are going to skyrocket in the next five, ten years. Skyrocket. Which is probably a good thing because there's too many people on the planet anyway. But, and even that's a question now. With new food farming technology, if you're doing it correctly, we can apparently feed everyone. Oh, I've got some stats right here. So what about hunger? 